All right, we're following some important breaking news right now. O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76. CNN's Stephanie Elam has more on his life. O.J. Simpson soared to fame as number 32 for the Buffalo Bills. I'm sorry for all of it. And plummeted to infamy as inmate number 1027820 in the Nevada Department of Corrections. In between, Simpson led a life filled with more surreal drama than all of his various film and TV projects combined. OJ, are you a Come on, come on. Mass media experts say Simpson's sensational televised low-speed chase, I have OJ in the car. arrest and murder trial, doesn't fit, you must acquit, stand as the first reality show and perhaps the greatest three-ring television phenomenon ever. At one point, the world heard O.J. Simpson's ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, say, I don't want to stay on the line. He's going to beat the shit. Wait a minute. Then later, Simpson was charged with the horrific murders by knife of Nicole and her friend, Ron Goldman. Ron and Nicole were butchered. The trial made lawyers and even witnesses household names. Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. When the jury freed Simpson, celebration erupted in parts of Los Angeles. But Simpson would never recapture his idol status. Simpson first sprinted into the national spotlight as the Heisman Trophy winning running back at the University of Southern California. Then 11 spectacular years with the NFL vaulted him to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Simpson cashed in on the popularity, go, OJ, go. becoming a pitch man for Hertz and an actor becoming well-known for the Naked Gun movies. O.J. Simpson, as you've never seen him before. Simpson played a lawman on screen and ran into trouble with the courts off screen. He lost the multi-million dollar wrongful death suit brought by the families of his ex-wife and Ron Goldman, then moved to Florida. In 2000, Simpson was accused of assault in a road rage incident in Miami. He was found not guilty. In 2005, he was found guilty and fined for stealing satellite television. Then in 2007 in Las Vegas, police arrested him on several felony charges, including kidnapping and armed robbery. In that case, Simpson and armed accomplices raided a hotel room in what he called an attempt to just get back some of his stolen belongings. And I didn't know I was doing anything illegal. I thought I was confronting friends and retrieving my property. The Nevada jury never bought his story and instead sent him to prison. He was released on parole nine years later in the dead of night with no fanfare and no bright future. Just the distinction of arguably the greatest rise and fall in pop culture history. Thank you, Stephanie, for that report. Uh, once again, we're following the breaking news right now. O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76. CNN's Gene Casares covered O.J. Uh, for several years. Uh, and uh, is, is joining us right now. Gene, let's talk a little bit about O.J. Simpson. Go ahead. Well, first of all, there is a tweet that has come out from his family. We do want to read that for everyone. And it says, on April 10th, our father, Orenthal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. During this time of transition, his family asks that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace, the Simpson family. You know, Wolf, there, there are really two O.J. Simpsons, because one is that football hero that this country adored for so many years. And in Southern California, I think those of us from Southern California believe that we got to know him originally, because as a graduate, he graduated from USC, was the Heisman Trophy winner. He was everything to people in Southern California, after then going on to the Buffalo Bills and also the San Francisco 49ers. But when I really started talking with him personally, Personally, myself was at that Las Vegas trial. I was the correspondent for his Las Vegas trial. It was kidnapping. It was armed robbery. Uh, I think people thought of it sort of as a funny thing, a joke, but the courts in Nevada thought of it as very serious because the potential was decades in prison. But every day I would go to the courthouse and he was there. He was on bail. So he would just be in the hallway. He would be in the gallery. He'd be talking to people. Once he found out that I was from Southern California and I was a USC graduate, he wanted to talk to me all the time because his passion was football, his passion was USC. He loved it and he was very, he wasn't nervous about what was happening at that trial, although the evidence was not good 
uh, against him, and he was ultimately convicted on all counts and all of his cronies. It was all his golfing buddies, and they they had gone to uh, try to retrieve what had been his personal property, but it was owned by someone else at the time. Unfortunately, some of them had a couple of guns, and so it became an armed robbery situation. But he just took it in his stride. But he was very nice to everybody, very humble to everyone. And everyone knew what he'd been through in California and all the questions that remained about the murders of Nicole uh, Brown Simpson and also um, Ron Goldman. But he was convicted on all counts. He was sentenced to 33 years in prison, over three decades. He served it out in Lovelock, Nevada, which is uh, uh, a northern, uh, a central outside of uh, Nev uh, Reno, Nevada. And he served nine years and he was released. And I was there when he was released uh, as the correspondent for the network. And it was a very subdued thing, but he stayed in Las Vegas. The next day, we heard he was golfing once again at home in Las Vegas. And that's where we believe he, uh, he stayed for the remainder of his life. But it, there were definitely two O.J. Simpsons and now secrets are possibly gone forever because the murder of Nicole Brown, uh, Nicole Goldman, Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman. Uh, we may never know the real truth. The jury acquitted him in 30 minutes. We know that. So he was acquitted. But what really happened to the lives of those two people may forever become a secret. Dean, I want you to stay with us. I also want to bring in our CNN contributor, Bob Costas, uh, who's joining us right now. Bob, uh, what's your reaction to the death of O.J. Simpson? How do you think he will be remembered? And talk a little bit about the tremendous cultural impact he had as a player in the NFL, an actor, and as a criminal defendant. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, as great as he was as a player, and it's not enough to say he was a Hall of Fame quality player, he was one of the handful of greatest running backs in the history of college football and then the NFL. And he also had a quality that's difficult to define, and statistics alone don't capture it. He was wonderful to watch. And he was always gracious with the press. He was outgoing. He was not just admired but beloved. And then to your point about being a cultural force, this is all prior to the murders, he was if not the first, he was the first to do it in a big way. An African-American athlete who broke through. Um, he used to say, I may have the quote incorrect, I'm not black, I'm not white, I'm OJ. Uh, and part of that was almost exemplified by a little stereotypical sort of blue-haired lady saying, go OJ, go, as he ran through the airport uh, in the rent-a-car commercials. Uh, and there were zillions of other commercials. And, and as Jean uh, outlined in her piece, or as the piece that preceded Jean coming on outlined, uh, the Naked Gun movies were countless television appearances. The movie stars, everything, everything about him, people feel it, more or less. Uh, there were pockets of the community, and I remember Jim Brown and I talked about this. He didn't dislike O.J., but he had a path certain racial issues, so there was that. But by and large, it was one of the most popular, not just athletes, one of the most popular people in the United States. I didn't know him well when he was playing football. That predated my time. And then eventually, we wound up being colleagues for four or five years on pre- and post-game shows around football on NBC. And he was... A pale fellow woman, the kind of guy who remembered the name of the kid who brought coffee when you first got on the set, to everybody, uh, willing to show up at charity events, good company yeah. at dinner or, or on the golf course, all those things. And everything changed in, uh, in June of 1994. Uh, and regardless of what he did out in his life, the first thing that will come to mind most people is what happened subsequently. Plus, subsequently, the murder themselves, uh, the low speed case was covered, spent a while for the beginning, better or worse, over reality television. Yeah. And then, although he lived some years after that, uh, most of that was lived uh, off the radar, 
uh, with his own friends playing golf. He did have a Twitter account and occasionally he posted stuff about the NFL or other thoughts, but he was a shadow figure. You know, it's really amazing when I think about O.J. Simpson, of course, I remember uh, when he played for my Buffalo Bills. I grew up in Buffalo, and I'm a huge Buffalo Bills fan, and O.J. was just a special player. He was loved by everyone in Buffalo. We were thrilled whenever we, we would see him on the field. He was really, really a special NFL star, and uh, those of us who love the Buffalo Bills were so grateful and appreciative that he was playing for our Buffalo Bills.